now being joined by a political analyst, Dr. Austin Oweze. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the conversation that I had with uh, Chief uh, Femi, Femi Fani Kaude yeah. uh, on the roadmap that the AP, uh, APC actually has set aside and they say that what they want to do is change. From your own point of view, do you think APC has the capacity? Because from what Dr. Obi is equally said, he said, look, that we do not have political parties in Nigeria. We only have political platforms. Do, does the APC have the capacity to achieve what it has slated that it wants to achieve? Well, the, uh, we're talking about the capacity in terms of human beings, and capacity in terms of resources, you know, capacity in terms of uh, ideas or what, whatever capacity they do. But I am not... Um, you know, what they have shown us, there's nothing different. Really? You know, there's nothing different. There's nothing about change in there. You know, because I always said that people should be careful, you know, about change. You could bring in, you want to kick out. It happened during the colonial era. You know, the Africa as a whole, African leaders then, we are more interested in kicking out the colonial masters without being prepared for change. And the colonial masters were not prepared to train them on how to provide governance to the people. And that's the same thing that we are experiencing today. So if you are thinking about change, there is nothing. There is no new ideas. We need ideas. Ideas rule the world today. So I haven't seen any new idea coming out of APC or PDP and all that. It's all about recycling, recycling, telling us different stories. Okay? The, same, uh, the same song that we're singing all over and over in different ways. So I don't see anything about change in the APC. But I mean, from from our journey, if you look mm. at it, the first, the second republic, from the and from 1999 up to this point, do we really need any sort of change? What exactly should we be looking at? No, we, when we talk about in the first place, the present democracy that we run is faulty. It's a mistake for a, a developing economy like, like Nigeria. First of all, it's too expensive. Our economy, the size of our economy below $300 billion cannot sustain this democracy. And there's no way in the world where the liberal democracy we pretend to be practicing in Nigeria has ever developed the economy. America that is doing it, they all evolved from different systems, the systems until they emerged to this, okay? So talking about the, this, the, the situation, the present system that we run in Nigeria is faulty. It should be crashed. We should, Nigeria needs, as a nation, we need restructuring. And that's what I expected APC to be coming up with, and not to maintain this status quo. If we keep on going like this, the economy, the people will keep suffering, because this system cannot really help the masses out there. And there is no, it will keep on producing people who are not committed to the, at the heart level. That's the most unfortunate thing that we have not had in Nigeria. A, a leader that is both committed to the heart level, and these are the people that will really, and those who who, who had the commitment at that level are not given an opportunity to do, to do whatever they want to do, okay? To, 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 to really show their commitment to, this, to, to reforming this nation. All right. I mean, I mean, as a political analyst, we're looking at several issues that the country is facing now. I mean, the second largest economy in Africa, but yet we see we're still one of the biggest exporters of oil into the country. The fact remains that we have it in abundance under the ground. But... A lot of potentials the nation has. How do you think, or what do you think we should be looking at? Because political ideology or the political stand of a, of a, of a country will affect this economy. How do of you course. think this, of course. what we need to be looking at now? We need to crash this system. And that's the opportunity that the National Conference has given us. We need to crash the system and come up with a system that is more distant. There's, I belong to uh, uh, Nigerian sort of Management uh, Committee that is looking at submitting a proposal to a national, a national conference, okay? And the idea we get is very, you know, very, yeah, very unique and, and all that. And could you, we'll solve, what, you ask yourself, what is Nigeria's biggest problem? It is, corruption is one of them, but it's not the major. The ma Nigeria's major problem is fear of intimate domination by uh, 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 different ethnic groups. And nobody's talking about it. So how do you solve that? One of the major things that the APC says it wants to actually wipe out is corruption. Corruption, how can you wipe out corruption? Corruption in the first place. We should, we should trace how far back uh, during the Mutala Mohammed era, when corruption actually, you know, really was given a face. When the sacking of uh, all the, all the uh, permanent, uh, of the civil servants uh, uh, in, in Samuel Manoa was one of them, 
and people who, who, who are sad on radio. And we're still having the same issue. So people who are there and began to say, okay, let me plan my retirement. So then they can go back to after, because nobody was sure anymore. There was so much uncertainty, which is still persists today. So we're saying like, corruption started, you know, was given a face at that time. And then it grew from one administration to the other until we got to where we are today. But the point is that beside corruption, by the time you, you crash and come up with what we are proposing to restructure Nigeria, a college of presidents. What kind of system of government are collegiate, you? Collegiate, collegiate system. What, what is it about? This, collegiate this system is such that you have six political jo zones. We are proposing that we have six kind of college of presidents. Okay? That even in some organizations, because in the knowledge economy we are today, it's too, it's, you know, it, the, the, the situation, the changes happening, it's too difficult for one man to rule over. But if you know, if you check out the Nigeria's history, you find that different ethnic groups, they are all afraid of uh, domination, being dominated by the other ones. And you find that, again, that as long as we keep having that fear, by the time we have a uh, college, college, uh, college of presidents, I'm uh, concerned about six from each geopolitical zone, and this will be taking turns every year, six-year turnout for the president. And once we have that, then we you find that you cannot say that you are being marginalized, mm, that right. you don't have opportunity to... I, 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 interesting. So, yes. I, I, at that particular event, the keynote speaker of, uh, at uh, the roadmap uh, launch of the APC was uh, Dr. O o Obi Ezekwesili. Let's uh, take a look at what she said, and we'll come back to talk more. You asked me to speak because you thought when I come here, I would jump into economic um, terms and all of that. Well, you know what? My topic is called The Uncomfortable Truth of Elusive Economic Development. Citizens are asking that the political class must be a new class of people that want to think of competency, character, and capacity. These three C's must be in every one of you that seeks to lead this nation to a new level of performance. None of the three attributes can be substituted by the other. You cannot run out and say, oh, I have great character, and yet no competency and no capacity. It would be a shipwreck. When it comes to the table of the sharing of the booties of governance, you never ask one another what ethnic group the other belongs to. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting uh, yeah. What do you have to say to you? Because at that moment, the APC members were there, the leaders were listening to him. And she said, actually, before she started, that you have invited me, and if you want to hear the hard truth, I'm here with you today. That's right. And so, from what she said, that seems to be very key, isn't it? Yes. You know, because there's no way, even in the villages, during the community this thing, before you become, become a, a village head, they will have to look at the character, your capacity to, 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 to lead them, okay? Those three things that she meant, that's very germane, germane point. But the point is that immediately she left there, what could have heard was, well, that's grammar, she has spoken and all that. Let's go ahead, business as usual. Because these people don't even care. These leaders we, we, we have, they don't even care about the people that they're leading. A senior government official once told me that when he heard that I contested the governorship of uh, Ebony State in 2011, he said, look, forget about what I don't be, there's no sentiment in politics, there's no, 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 this thing. just go ahead, go, grab whatever you can grab, and not, not about the people. I never went back to see him. I never went back, because that is not politics. Because you use politics as a platform to provide leadership. Nobody is uh, going to you say, uh, you're a politician or not. There's nothing like that. So you think that the national conference will actually provide, uh, provide a, a oh, lot yes. of oh, uh, yes. premise all to, the things to tackle that all of these not, issues? Not PDP we, 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 we help to we change Nigeria, not APC, not any of these parties. Really? To change Nigeria, you, need the, you have to use the uh, national conference so that we can, 
you use restructure Nigeria right. so that this fear of intimi of dom domination by one ethnic group will be wiped off. Everybody say a, 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 a good playing field. And again, if that does not happen, you find that my children, your children, any other person's children might not have the opportunity. Right. Thank to, you so to rule this nation. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Osi Inouese, for, for your thoughts on these issues. Thank you. We really appreciate your time. Right. Well, it's been a wonderful time on the program tonight. I hope that uh, you've been able to take one or two things out from uh, the discussions on the program tonight. Well, on behalf of the team, my name is Jim Walking Baloye. Until next time, have a wonderful evening.